Hello there, everybody. So, Bar Night Two, AK Nightmare, and welcome to what will possibly be the final episode of Zero Time Dilemma. <sighs> it's finally time for us to put this Zero Escape trilogy to rest. I think. Anyway, there, I I am still kind of trying to piece together pretty much uh, oh. I'm still trying to piece together a lot of stuff right now but I think I've got the passwords that I need so we're gonna go ahead and start with C team seriously what the hell is this thing a force quit box I know that I'm asking what exactly it's going to end whatever it is we can't do anything unless we have the password. Hmm. A password. Huh. What is it, Carlos? I feel like... Uh, I can almost remember. What? The password to open this box. How do you know... Just shut up for a second. I think the password has to be... The password is... Okay, let's test this out here. Enter the password. Okay, um... Yep. Open the box. Aha! It's open! What the hell is this? It looks like a device of some kind. Hey, look. Uh, something's appearing on the monitor. Ooh. To execute the Force Quit program, the central control computer must be booted. Ah, the CDQ! Central control computer? Wait, did we oh. ever see something like that in here? Oh, I got the password for if that there too. Isn't, then we're out of luck. Hmm, dead end, huh? Not necessarily. Uh, hey, Carlos. Uh, how did you know that password? I shifted, sure. bruh. What? I don't know how I knew. Um, this is just a guess, but Carlos. Did you possibly shift from another timeline? Maybe. Wait, shift? Shift. Shift. Apparently, if you hold that too long, it causes the sticky keys to activate. Oh, yeah, please, just show us all of the darker stuff. Thank you. Guess what I needed? Thank you. Oh, so it was like that then. Hey, come on. You're the only one to figure it. Sorry, just could you be quiet for a second? Oh, I need to think about something. Mm hmm. Okay. You gonna smack the wall again? You've been sitting here for an hour, Carlos. Could you maybe share what you've been thinking about? Do you want to know? Kinda. Yes. I was thinking about you, Akane. Carlos! Me? You're, uh, well, to be blunt, really hot. <gasps> huh? We may never manage to make our way out of this shelter. Carlos, what are you doing? You know what that means. Right. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm not sure. What the hell are you getting at, you asshole? Oh look, a Neanderthal is trying to block my way. What, what are you doing? Wait, what the hell? What? Carlos! Carlos! Ah! No! Carlos, what are you doing? I am very... 
Uh, I'm very confused right now. Is he trying to make Junpei shift? Carlos, you gotta have something planned, so what the hell are you doing, man? What the hell are you doing, Carlos? Hmm. I suppose I couldn't control myself. You asshole! Uh what? Is that all you got? What are you what doing? Did you say? That's the extent of your feelings for Akane? Huh? Damn you! I'm very, very lost. That was a good one. Oh, I can tell you're finally getting fired up over this. Shut the fuck up! You fucking asshole! Okay, this is officially the angriest I think I have ever seen Junpei. Holy shit. That was nothing. Anyway. Hey, man. What do you say to a drink? What? To clean the slate between us. Come on. Uh. I am actually incredibly lost. What the hell are you doing, Carlos? This one will work fine. Ah, oh, damn it. I blame you for this, Junpei. Uh, my hands are all shaky after your brutal punches. Uh... Sorry, but could you guys help me clean this up? What the hell? I'm so confused. What the hell is going on here? Um... Thanks, guys. Um, uh, uh, sure. Guys, it's almost time. Oh, were they plan? Oh, they're pl they're actually planning something. Now it is time for you to sleep. When next you wake, now you will have no memory of these past night minutes. Oh. Pleasant dreams. Oh. I finally think I get it. I think I get it now. He needed Junpei to inflict wounds on him that would be very noticeable whenever they would wake up. So what I'm thinking is, they must have written something down behind the bar. Possibly. Did anything open up? Nope. In that case, let's go ahead and open up this for squid box. Hmm. Got two events here. Oh! That's right! They're all in the same room! That must mean they must find something here! Where are we? The map says we're in... The quantum computer dome. The computers in here govern all the functions that run... And I've got the code for that, too. Why do you know that? I can't really tell you why. Because... I don't know. What? Anyway... I think they mean this when they say central control computer. Oh, naturally. So, what about that thing? Wait, I feel like I'm remembering something. I'm not. I'm not skipping the cutscenes because. I know. I mean, why? You know what? I, I mean, the as well. The way you start up the system. First, just to kind of keep the flow of the, the story. There's no way we can insert the plug if we don't. The plug? Please, yep. Please, just shh. Huh, I think the number is... Okay, I got the code right here. Okay. Three, eight, zero, eight, zero, 
eight, three, two. Booyah. There we go. Now all we have to do is insert the plug here. So where is this plug? Hmm. It's I inside think. my head. If we input the right numbers here. What? Wait. Oh. What do numbers for your head have anything to do with the plug for this? Uh. I should just do it. You might get it then. Stop avoiding the question. No. Do you even know what should go there? The numbers. The numbers are um. Don't worry. Don't worry. I've got them. I've got them. All right. Another input. Six. One. Four. Zero. Four. Zero. Nine. One. All right. And since I'm dead, I can take off my head. <laughs> to recite Shakespearean quotation. Are you kidding me? You're... You're... I'm the Headless Horseman. And I'm guessing he just fainted, didn't he? No, he's awake. He's awake. Ugh. Eric, it's been an hour. Would you just get used to it already? How can I? The kid has no head. He's... It's a... It's a robot. It is gender right. It's a boy. For real? Could you maybe do something about it? Is this better? Yeah. Now the shape brings out your eyes. <laughs> so this doesn't freak you out or anything at all. I could say the same to you. Hey, you're taking it pretty lightly, Mira. Not much phases me. Yeah, that's that's right, Martian Psycho Killer. Like her. Yeah, I was surprised when I first found out. I thought my heart was in my throat. Hmm. You don't have a heart. Eric? Hey, hold on. Did you say when you first found out? I meant it happened to me before. In the past. In another history. Uh, another? I remembered everything. I'm glad I got all these written down. I saw what I looked like earlier. Oh. Bye, Delta. Bye, Delta. Hi, Amino Sagiri. You see, my brain isn't located in this head. My thought center is there, inside the quantum computer. The QCD. That is where I think, perceive, and send command signals to this body. I see what they For did example, there. When I raise my hand like this, it's simply receiving a command. Just like a remote controlled toy. Did you know? A quantum state is one where all possibilities overlap and coexist. This quantum computer then is able to use this state and runs the simulations A, B, and C simultaneously. Basically, my brain is an infinite number of worlds and possibilities. Most certainly. So I can use that framework and, well, jump between other histories. Oh, there's no way. That I could do that? But it's possible that you two might be undergoing the same thing. There's a theory. Human consciousness may be a result of quantum effects in the brain. Mm. It's called quantum mind. 
quantum it's mind. It's more or less suggesting a human brain is a form of quantum computer. If a specific set of conditions are met, then you too can jump to other histories. Hmm. <laughs> this sounds like crazy talk. You don't believe me? Of course not. Oh, I don't blame you. I guess I should explain everything then. Oh, please do. Please start at the beginning. Before I begin, I need to do one little thing. Look yourself up. I assume. Okay, get used to this, Eric. His head is going to pop off again. Oh. What did you just do? Uh, just a little something. <laughs> oh. Uh. Stop it! Still alive? Hello? Oh, now we're over here. Nothing changed. Huh that we can see, but it looks like the message changed. Hmm? Yes, I started up the system earlier. It says force quit program on standby. To initiate, two key items must be set. What does that even mean? Hmm. Wait, it seems like there's something else. The key items are... A mother's mementos? Hmm. I wonder what those could be. Hmm. The brooch and the bluebird? So, this is saying we need to find them? Does that mean they're hidden around here somewhere? Even if that's true? I don't think we have the time. Hmm. Damn. Guess our time's up. Next week, you'll have no memory of the past 90 minutes. When next you wake, now you will have no memory of these past 90 minutes. Huh, I'm really getting good at it being zero. That or maybe it's because I've heard the phrase so many gosh diggity dang times that I just can't get enough of it. Alright. Now we jump over to D-Team. Wait. Yep. Alright. To the force quit box we go. If I'm right, I think I know what the key items are. Why is it open? No idea. There's text displayed on the monitor. Force quit program on standby. To initiate, two key items must be set. <laughs> How about that? Wait, I think there's more to the message. A mother's message. Is a mother's... Diana, does any of that ring a bell for you? <laughs> no! Hey, oh. what's wrong? My head! My head! Oh. No! That can't be! What is it? Did you remember something? Holy shit, Fi's my daughter! If, if that's true. The key items we need to insert are... The brooch and the bluebird. I hope I spell brooch right. Yep, okay. The first one must be brooch. And then... Blue... Oh, I can add a space. All right. Yes! Got it! Oh, this is gonna be a hell of a shock to Diana. And Sigma if he gets it.
Diana? Oh. What's gotten into you? I... <laughs> oh, Aww. I... Is it gonna hit you too, Sigma? Oh! What? No. Diana, you're... Pug? Yes. <laughs> Sigma. You don't have to say anything. This. This is enough for now. Aww. That was so sweet. Oh, achievement unlocked. Bigger on the inside. All right. That just leaves. Oh, what the? They're all the same. And they're all together. Final decision. Oh, good. <laughs> the illusion shatters. Hmm. I knew it. Awkward family reunion. Looks like the memories we regained are true after all. The three wards were all in the same place. Then... Oh! Carlos! Akane. Junpei. And Mira and Eric. And you're... Sean, right? Yeah! Carlos. What happened? Proof of friendship. Huh. <laughs> anyway, what are you guys doing here? According to the schedule, C team and Q team should both still be asleep. We took a page out of your book and did what you did. We used the cards to keep the bracelet needle from injecting us. Oh! Does that mean? Yeah. I remember everything. I do too. Junpei and I as well. Um, over the past few hours, uh, we got back the memories we forgot. What? Oh, interesting. So in that regard, I guess the drugs were like temporary amnesia. Well, I mean, I guess it makes sense. Amnesia can be considered temporary, but in some cases it can be considered permanent. Well, to be more accurate, it's more like we accessed the morphogenetic field and downloaded all of them. Oh, okay, there we go. Then Never mind. You have the other history's memories too? Yes. Then you're like us. But why? Hold up. Eric and I are different. Yeah. We didn't gain memories. From other histories. You're just normies. Then neither of you got injected? No. We're the same as Carlos and the others. I told them. Um, maybe I'll start from the beginning? Please do, Sean. First, so I could run the program in the Force Quit Box, I accessed the Central Control Computer. Then, I briefly turned off the communication network. That way, I stopped the surveillance cameras from sending any data to Zero. Ooh, I smart. I didn't want Zero to catch on to what we were doing. And that's when Sean let us in on the truth of what's going on here. We went over to the transporter room and picked up two cards. Before the injection, we each slipped one between our wrist and bracelet. OK. 
Okay. Now you two make sense. But what about you, Sean? I'm a robot! You probably already know, but I'm a robot. Being injected does nothing to me. Then, every time the time limit approached, I was forced to go into sleep mode. Yeah. Then, my memories from the previous 90 minutes were deleted. I didn't want that to happen, so... You remember me saying I accessed the computer? Well, I hacked my own system, too. Nice! He said he managed to cancel the forced sleep and delete functions. Good job, Sean! What about C-Team, then? We couldn't interrupt the surveillance cameras, so we had to be sneaky instead. First, Carlos pushed me down and climbed on top of me. He what? <laughs> it, was, it was just an act. I was only pretending to do it. Carlos used that moment to whisper in my ear. Oh. He said to go to the transporter room and grab the cards in there. But if I just let her go like that, it looks suspicious. So Junpei and I stayed behind to get Zero's undivided attention. I casually invited Junpei to the power room. You can see the results of our conversation. <laughs> you should have told me what was up. If I had. <laughs> oh my god, Carlos, that's a hell of a plan, dude. <laughs> Then Zero would have figured it out. You, you look like you'd be a crap actor. Ugh. And after that? We met Akane in the lounge. We hid from the cameras and each got a card from her. Oh! See, that part I messed up on. I thought they were going to write a message, but then I'm. That now that I think about it, if they did write a message, it would probably would have, you know. <sighs> pretty sure surveillance would have picked it up. No, out of curiosity. Yep. <clears throat> Sorry, but could I get confirmation on something? Everyone knows what all happened in the other histories, right? Even you, Mira and Eric? Didn't Eric say so earlier? Sean told us everything. But wait. Why? Why what? Why do we know about the other histories? Well, that's probably... Hmm. Morphogenetic field! You want to know? Oh! Hey, oh god, it's Delta and... Oh shit, he's got the gun. Delta, 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 Delta. You? Oh boy, Maybe he's got the gun, he's got the gun. actually zero. You are free to call me by my given name, which is Delta. <sighs> There's no need to look so threatening. You were the one who named me, Diana. Oh yeah, by the way, plot twist, me and um, Sigma are this guy's parents. And also Phi's parents. What? It doesn't matter. I shall answer your question. Carlos, Kane, Junpei, Diana, Phi, and Sigma. All six of you know that you are shifters, correct? Yeah. Think back on your path to this very moment. Did you arrive at this history by following a normal flow of time? No. No. Of course you didn't. You jumped in from another history using your shift abilities. And it wasn't just this once. You have been shifting back for many, many times. A lot, actually. From one point in space time to another. You boldly took chances, much like jumping from one tree branch to another. You have forgotten that fact, perhaps as a result of the medicine, or as one of the side effects of shifting. Mm -hmm. Regardless, your memories have been kept 
firmly intact within the morphogenetic field. It is simply that the six of you regained the memories of those times. Yeah. One small trigger and the levy preventing you from remembering collapsed. Sean is a similar case. However, his thought center is located within the quantum computer. So I suppose it's slightly different from you. Still kind of counts. What about me and Mira? You are both like me in that we do not have the ability to shift. Well, you don't? Huh? Mm -mm. I have another power instead. What? The power to mind hack. What? Mind hack? Wait. Wait a minute. That moment when Eric was being controlled. I am able to read other people's minds. I know the thoughts and ideas that go through their heads. That's why I know exactly what Phi is trying to do right now. Shit. Get away from that device, Phi. Then, when we blocked the injection... I saw through your ruse. Shit! Then why did you... I wanted all of you to play the final decision game. <sighs> the final decision game? Okay. I find human decisions fascinating. More specifically, the world branching that occurs as a result. I already mentioned that I am unable to share. But after looking inside millions of minds, I learned one thing. There are people in this world with the ability to jump between histories. That shifters exist. Hence, why I know so much about these parallel worlds. Okay. You did all this because you were curious? When a person does something significant, it's difficult to boil the reason down to one word. Their motives are often very complex. It is the same now. To fulfill several objectives, it was necessary to trap all of you in here. So why did you do it? You want to know? Yeah. It is so you give birth to Phi and myself, Diana. What? Just to... What? Uh, what do you mean? Phi and I are the children of Diana and Sigma. Phi is... Wait. <laughs> They're children? November yeah. 16th, 2029. Phi and I were born in this shelter. This was another history, of course. And then transported to back history. Shortly after, the atomic data that makes up our bodies was transported to April 1904. The transporter was located in a German research facility at that time. Oh. Our bodies reconstructed and regenerated in the export pods at that facility. But that would mean you're actually... I'm 124. Holy shit! You're joking. But Phi is... A German researcher sent her to 2008. Wait. Records indicate that she was part of an experiment. You're saying Phi jumped back in time from 2029 to the year 1904? Uh. And then forward again to 2008? Uh. Technically, what was sent both times was simply the data makeup of Phi's body. 
I heard that in 2008, the device was being studied in an American facility. <sighs> That's when an old couple who were researchers took me in. <sighs> We've gone off topic. But yes, that was one of the major goals. Well, brain. Everything that occurred here helped create Phi and myself. And when I say that, I am including all of the other histories. If I hadn't trapped the group of you here, then Phi and I would have never been born in our current forms. Your current forms? Sean, you should already know about epigenetics. You see, Environmental factors determine which switches are activated within the genetic code. Uh, yeah. Are the same. Or perhaps I should say that the reproductive cells are the ones most affected. Oh, I get it. That's why you made Diana and Sigma play the decision game. What do you mean? By backing them into a crisis situation, he caused an epigenetic change within their reproductive cells. Oh, I uh. think that's why their children were born with unique powers. Oh, Sigma does not look happy. This is the reason I have my mind hacking abilities. Phi was affected as well. You were born a shifter. DT, do you recall what was written on your wall? Uh, <coughs> shit, I can't remember. Oh, when thank God. A curious hate oozes calamity. And rearranging the letters gives you. No way. What you choose can materialize us. Oh, our, our decisions will bring you to life. That is why the decision games were held. So that the Phi and me, here now, would materialize exactly the way we are. Okay, Phi's no. clearly not having any of that. Okay, so I get why you had to have Diana and Sigma go through life or death decisions. But the rest of us had nothing to do with... I already told you, my motives are complex. Clearly! Wait, there's more? Oh, God. Ah! Fuck you, you goddamn old man! Fuck. Okay, Phi, you probably should not... No! Damn! Okay, gold star for the most badass kick I think I've ever seen. Of course, Eric, of course, Eric's got the fucking gun. Over. God damn it. You may be right. What? Diana, take this. Put it in. Your bluebird too. Uh. Okay. It's ready. What? Oh no! What the hell? What is this? That's it. <laughs> Your neck is glitching, hey, Delta. Hey, what's with that announcement? Must I explain? This shelter will soon explode. Oh. We worked so hard only to turn on this facility's self-destruct mechanism. Sha. Access the central control computer. It's no use. Once the force quit program has been activated, there is no possible way for you to reverse it. Well, then shit! What do we do? 
I will tell you one good, no, two good things. <laughs> First, I suggest checking behind the bar counter. We only have like 10 minutes, okay? Oh. Oh. No! Why would you? Gab. <gasps> Gab's been. You monster! Did you kill Gab? Yes, with a shotgun you're holding. How could you? There's much life left in him anyway. You monster! I never expected to hear that coming from you, Sean. You killed so a good boy! Something. You had two things to tell us. I have the ability to mind hack. We already know that. But I've not told you everything about him. Reading other people's thoughts isn't the only thing I can do. You can control hacking. people. It only lasts a moment. But I am able to control someone's body as I wish. Like this. Crap. Wait. Uh huh? It oh. No, for real, I... My finger just... Mind hacking. He controlled Eric to kill him. Understand now. This is my power. So, let's begin. Your final decision game. You have two... Choices. Okay, look at this guy. He's 124 years old and he took a shotgun and he is still talking. What? To stay here and wait to die? No. The, the other is. The other is. Of course he dies! We gotta open up the X door, don't we? What's the other option? What's the other option? Too late, I'm dead. Damn. Uh. Five minutes until explosion. Ah! Well, what should we do? What about the X door? And how exactly should we open it? Unless six people die, it's gonna stay closed. Or should we start killing each other now? Mira, no. I have an idea. What? Which is? We're going to shift, all of us, together. Huh? Hey, okay, hold on. Like, jumping to another history? But... Eric and I, I'm sure it will be fine. Remember what I said? Human consciousness may be a result of quantum effects in the brain. Oh yeah, you said if certain conditions are met, we can also... What are the conditions? Life or death situation? You need to be exposed to danger. And the other one is to be in the vicinity of a group of shifters. And we got six right here. Will resonate, and then Mira and Eric can. But which history are we going to jump to? None of the similar histories will work. One team is likely to be dead after the vote. And we can't shift if there are no bodies for us to jump to, right? Then we need to jump to where all of us are alive. When we're all alive. The very beginning. Do you mean. The coin flip! The history where we won the coin toss. Three minutes until explosion. Okay. I'm not sure I get it all, but it's a good idea. 
What are you saying? There's no way we could do that. Why not? Shift isn't simply jumping into bodies in different histories. Our consciousnesses swap places. Ours for theirs. We'll be forcing our other selves into these bodies and they'll die without knowing why. Yeah, and what's wrong with that? What? Well, they're all living without a care off in another history, yeah? One time? They do the coin toss once and win? Don't you think that's unfair? To be fair, I got you're, it right the first time. You're saying they, but we're talking about ourselves here. Well, we should consider if those people really are us. Good point. If we assume that we here are the true versions, then the us in the other history are essentially strangers. Even more of a reason not to. If we shift to that history, then... We're tossing the others under the bus to save ourselves. The us in that history have done nothing wrong. <sighs> the only thing they did was win at a coin toss. You could say the same for us. The only thing we did was lose a coin toss. Even so, we've had to go through so much shit. And then, force an, an ungodly large amount of shit. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait. wait. Yep, Q is dead. Put our lives on the line. Besides, aren't the bodies and the other histories ours anyway? Then why should we second guess ourselves? Huh. Um. Do you have any ideas, Sean? One minute until explosion. We're out of time. I'll say it again. We have two choices. We can stay here and wait for our deaths or survive by sacrificing our other selves in another history. So that's what the bastard meant. The final decision game. Oh. Okay. Well, obviously. Uh... Oh. Wait, is it the same? Yeah, it's the same. Oh. Okay. They are two. Nevada Desert, DCOM. Damn, I, I can't remember anything. Me neither. Neither can I. It somehow feels like... Like I made a bet with someone but someone what kind of bet did we all forget what happened hey uh could i ask all of you something who is this kid hi there Okay, and they're all down for the count. Holy fuck! Uh, did we do it? We're not wearing the bracelets, so... I don't know the time, but... Judging by the position of the sun, it's probably noonish. And the date? How would I know? Hey, Mira. Eric. Do you remember me? 
Yeah. I definitely remember you. Aww. Then we really did. Oh, it must have worked. Life is unfair. It simply is think? unfair. Oh, thank God Gab's okay. You bastard. You killed him! 17 years ago, a snail traveled down a narrow path in the park. I decided to build my entire scheme around that goddamn snail that pissed me off. If that snail hadn't been there, perhaps all of you here would have lived a completely different life than you did. Just one small snail, and everyone's lives, even the world, changed. So what you're saying is a snail caused the entire Zero Escape trilogy and now the fourth secret game that has yet to be released is our job to go find that snail and then step on it. So what's the big deal? Oh, would you would you just quit talking nonsense? Hey Gab. I'm so glad you were safe. Okay, buddy. Of course we were. You all have shifted in from another history whatever we gotta call the cops and what exactly will that accomplish isn't uh, it obvious we're throwing you in the slammer and my crime murder murder i see but i haven't killed anyone ah. specifically in this history not a single person has died Ah. I strongly doubt the police would listen. Oh. Shit, he has a point. But in the other histories, you... Did you not pay attention? I don't have the ability to shift. The only reason I know anything of those histories is because I mind-hacked you. In effect... The me you know is a different person than the one before you. Can I be charged for killing someone in another history? If so, then I'd say this world would be full of criminals of all kinds. The sad part is he's not wrong. What about conspiracy to commit? Yeah. I'm betting this history's got a bunch of dangerous machines and gimmicks all over the shelter. Unfortunately, I have removed them all. <laughs> You've slept for quite a while. That gave you plenty of time to get rid of the evidence. Shelter. No transporter, no quantum computer. Loaded into a truck, taken away. Now wait a minute, how the hell is Sean still standing? If the Sean quantum computer is gone. able to move right now due to radio signals received from a satellite. Oh. That explains that. Aren't you happy? I say again, in this history, not a single person has died. Phi and I exist, and there will never be an outbreak of Radical Six. There is only a bright future ahead for all of us. Is this not what you'd call a happy end? A very messed up one. But, according to you, all of mankind will die if time passes and and nothing is done. Yeah, you're right about Just that. Fanatic. A terrorist attack that sparks a nuclear war. I heard this story. You said... You released Radical Six so that you could kill that person. Hmm. The me before you did not say that, but I can't deny it's true. Radical Six won't spread throughout the world in this history. That means that fanatic guy won't die. Wait, so now humans will go extinct? Hey, where's that happy future you mentioned? Interesting. Does that make you angry, Fi? Uh... What? If so, 
then we have a serious contradiction. I have prepared a future in another history where two billion would survive. But yeah, you decided to jump to this history. That means you chose a future where humanity goes extinct. Over six billion dead. Uh... No, you're wrong, Delta. Nothing in the future has been determined yet. We'll shape the future with our own hands. Huh, you said something I can get behind, Carlos. Yeah. I think so, too. I agree. Okay, me too. Mira. You're right. The future has infinite possibilities. If we work together, we can accomplish anything. Humanity's gonna die out? Screw that. We'll definitely change that horrible future. <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> Just that. What the hell do you mean? I'm sure I told you in another history that my motives are complex. Yeah. Imagine. What if none of you had experienced the events that occurred in the shelter? You're so determined now to change the future. One of the goals of all of this was to get you into that frame of mind. It's all going according to plan. Without a single casualty. I created a future where mankind will be saved. <laughs> Does that upset you? Are you angry that your life was played with? To be fair, anybody would be angry. Very well. I will give all of you one last choice. Huh? Uh. With that gun there, you will be able to choose whether to kill me now or allow me to leave. Uh. I promise I won't use mind hacking on you. You are free to decide. Which shall it be? Pull the trigger, or let me go. The fates of you, me, and mankind are all on the line. This is the decision game. Uh. Achievement unlocked. Fountain of knowledge. Wait, that's where it just. Uh. Oh my god. Good god, Delta. You're just. God, you're just so. Okay. I'm more stuck in shock than anything else, if I can be perfectly honest. I mean, there's still some stuff I have to do, obviously. There's going back and seeing what happens if I don't shift. But... Wow. Not sure whether to give my final thoughts for this whole trilogy or just wait until I complete the extra stuff. You know what? I think I'll just go ahead and share my final thoughts right now. I admit, whenever I first heard about this trilogy, I wasn't entirely sure what to think of it. So, whenever I got into 999, had to admit, it was very interesting a uh, gameplay style where I had where I was in escape rooms. It was very interesting as well as a colorful cast of characters and 
just the alternate world that existed, depending completely on your choices. You know, kind of like, a, a, a basically a trilogy designed around the butterfly effect. I... I'm trying to, I'm having a hard time trying to come up with other titles that have done something, well, kind of similar to this, but... Realistically, I can't really come up with anything that executed it, well, this well. This game, well, it, it challenged me quite a bit. A large amount of the puzzles themselves were actually... While I did do well on some, I struggled on others. Which, to be fair, that's kind of how I like games, where it challenges me. But let's get into the story of this trilogy. Jesus freaking holy hell. You know, when I started 999, I wasn't prepared for... that. I wasn't prepared for a story that would become so goddamn convoluted that my brain has already, well, I've had to take about a few health insurance and life insurance policies out on my brain because of how many times it's collapsed into itself. And it doesn't matter how many newspapers I put out on this carpet, my brain matters or uh, shit, there goes another part. Anyway, I'm just, this game, it, well, it made me think. It made me think a lot. But it, it, it never, I, no matter how much I told myself that I was actually prepared for the convoluted mess, not, okay, mess in a good way, like, how all of this connects together and all of that. My mind was definitely not prepared. No matter how often I did try, I was not prepared for the absolute insanity of this holy all types of hell story. Also, what the hell are we gonna do about Mira now? You know, she's still a serial killer. I mean, are we gonna get a redemption for her, possibly? I'm not entirely sure how that's gonna work. She has to be held accountable for what she's done. I know that much. And you know what? I'm kind of glad that the game didn't, at least for right now, at least the game didn't actually tell me what Carlos decision, Carlos's decision was, whether he pulled the trigger or not. There's something about leaving it with that level of ambiguity that kind of, it kind of wraps it all up just nicely. I mean, again, the game could suddenly just tell me, oh, by the way, here's what he did. I'm like, eh, okay, fine. There, there's so much for the ambigu the ambiguous ending. Yeah, well, uh, well, nobody's happy. But uh, I, I'm I'm happy I experienced this game because it really it really tested my mind and it really helped me, you know, come to appreciate escape room puzzles. It's thanks to the support of our fans that this project was completed. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Zero Escape Staff. Well, you guys did a great job. This game was fantastic. Achievement unlocked. The final decision. CDQ and two. Nice. Oh, my controller disconnected there for a second. That's okay. Oh! Completed! All sections cleared! That just leaves one last thing. <laughs> Choosing to stay. Which is actually not good now that I think about it. Actually, yeah, this is actually not a good thing if they just stay here, because if they don't, then people are still gonna die. Holy shit, this is actually the bad decision, now that I now that I saw the ending of, of the, uh, whenever you choose to shift. Aww. Boom! God, somebody cast McGee DeLowen.
Gotta hand it to them, the explosions look fancy as all hell. Oh! That was short. Oh! Achievement unlocked, shifter, Q team subject report, C team subject report. Huh. And D team subject report. Does that mean extra? Hmm. Is there something on the menu that I missed? Not seeing anything. Hmm. Oh, oh, I, I think I was already told how to do this. Okay, I need to just go into a uh, segment here. Just real quick and go to the archives, I believe. That's what I need to do. Okay, uh, yeah, the files, sorry. Oh, hello. Oh, wow. Uh, oh, oh my God. I should have been reading some of this, shouldn't I? Okay, you know what? I'm not entirely sure. Wait. Hello. Post apocalypse. This must be fate. Fate? Anna smells weakly from the bed at Sigma's question. Don't you remember? You told me that yourself. Me? I never said it. If it was if it really was me, then Yes, the Sigma who is 67 inside. Diana shifts her frail hand closer to Sigma, and he gently grasps it between his own. The Sigma before her is not the one who is trapped in the shelter. It's the same body, but a different consciousness. On April 13th, 2029, Sigma was at the headquarters of Crash Keys. His iron arms are placed with robotic ones. There, the young Sigma returns to his body from 45 years in the future and begins to carry out Akane's instructions. How many years has it been since you came here, Diana? A little over three, I think. I followed you here in May 2029. A violent coughing fit takes over after she speaks. Sigma helps her sit up and softly pats her back until it subsides. Why didn't the medical pod work? I told you, it's fate. Diana's skin is deathly pale, but her eyes still shine with life. Just like a child's. Aww. Wait. I've always dreamt of you coming here. Did you know that Diana is the name of the goddess of the moon? I've wanted to do this ever since I was little, so I'm perfectly fine with dying here. What are you saying? I've been able to spend the last three years living with you, Sigma. I've treasured every moment. Sigma lowers his head, his expression pain. Please don't make that face. You don't need to be sad. In the year 2074, you will shift back to Christmas 2028, and the next day... Old me will head to the decom facility in the Nevada desert and meet you. Diana nods. Sigma closes his eyes and shakes his head. That's not it. I mean, I'm in love with the you... His declaration stops as Diana's lips close over his in a kiss and the rest of his words are lost. After a moment, Diana murmurs, it Must be a wonderful future. The future where we found each other. 20. Sigma holds on to her tightly. Aching, heartfelt sobs echo with an old, silent one. Aww. Damn. The robot with the round helmet on his head is named Sean. He has never been called anything other than that by those in the underground shelter. Oh. Audentum Forsk Venisk Yovat, a phrase from Ovid. It roughly translates to both love and luck help the bold. Oh. Uh -huh. The other Phi. Baby Phi was indeed transported from 1904 to 2008, but a Phi also remained in the 1904. Whatever happened to that Phi? 
Rumor is she became a brilliant scientist and worked at a research facility in the US well into her 100s. The facility was researching the transporter, and that's where the five from 1904 is sent. Huh. Oh, post payoff time. Post payoff, Carlos. The day is bright and clear. A girl in a white dress strolls along the beach, the wind tossing her long blonde hair playfully. Up until a half a year ago, she had been confined to a bed. Carlos's eyes still tear up every time he sees her smile. Come on, Carlos, you don't always have to help me. That's the point of my rehab. Uh, you're right. Sorry, Maria. Carlos brushes her hair out of her face. It's definitely not the summer sun that's making him act out of sorts. It's the fact that his sister is here standing before him. Maria grins up at him. What would Akane and Junpei say if they saw you being all fussy like this? <laughs> it's fine. They understand how important you are to me. Both you and Junpei put out your lives on the line. That was a different history, but going through that means we know how to treat Reverie Syndrome. I can't believe we have the ability to jump through space-time. I'm just glad you're able to control it now. It's all because Carlos met Akane and Junpei that Maria was able to recover. He wishes he could show them just how well she's doing. Ah, That's so sweet. You're thinking about them right now, aren't you, Carlos? What makes you say that? Because you're smiling. Carlos closes his eyes as his unconscious smile turns fond. They're just about your age. It kind of feels like a game to brother and another sister. You are going to their wedding, aren't you? Yeah, and you're coming with me. But there's something Carlos needs to do first, back when the three of them parted ways. I'll be waiting to hear word from you when, we, when you locate that terrorist. Carlos held his right hand out toward Akane and Junpei, and the other two grabbed onto it with their own. There was no way of knowing if Delta was telling the truth, but if he was, one fanatic would kill all of humanity. Akane and Junpei vowed to find this person, and Carlos offered to help. He can still feel the strong bond between the three of them, their hands clasped together tightly. I suppose I'd better get used to talking more before the wedding, huh? Holding her hand out of her face, Maria reaches out to her brother, who takes her hand in his, and they continue walking down the beach. The same blue sky above them stretches over friends Carlos knows he can rely on. Oh, my heart! Ah. Post payoff, Akane and Junpei, one. Junpei sits upon a white sofa somewhere within the secret location of Crash Keys, twiddling a pen and sighing. Hmm, what else should I say? Laying on the table in front of him is a half-written letter. Suddenly, Akane pops up behind him. What are you doing, Junpei? She playfully teases. Duh! Junpei dies for the letter, but she snatches it from his fingers and begins reading. Let's see. Carlos, without you, Akane and I would have never gone together. Thank you. Is this an invitation to the wedding? N no, it's most definitely not. He makes a graph for the paper, but Akane quickly moves it out of his reach. It's just a progress report, Junpei mutters. Okay, yeah, I mentioned the wedding, but the date hasn't been set yet. I made a promise to, to, to you and your brother. We wouldn't get married until we've dealt with the fanatic. Ah. Akane's face flushes bright red. She hastily hides her face behind the letter and goes back to reading. I'd like nothing more than to get the approval and blessing of our old friends, and those of you we met six months ago. Eyes wide, Akane glances up at Junpei. He avoids her gaze, awkwardly scratching the back of his head. Ah. That is so nice. That's so sweet. You know, there's a history where I keep searching for you, even after I'm old and craggly. It still exists out there somewhere. And when I think of that, a sharp pain jolts through Junpei's face. Akane is pinching his cheek. Ow! That hurts! What are you doing? To prove to you that this isn't a dream, Akane giggles. You still can't believe we're together like this? Junpei shakes his head. You've changed a lot, Junpei. Half a year ago, you were never this honest. It's like... How do I want to describe it? Like a dream? Huh? Junpei leans in and quickly pinches Akane. D oh, now you've done it! She darts forward and goes after Junpei with both hands, getting in a pinch whenever she can, and Junpei does the same. <laughs> oh my god, that is just too cute. Once they start laughing, it's very hard to stop, and they keep going until they're out of breath. Ugh. I guess this is all thanks to Carlos, too. 
That's why I'm writing that letter, th that thank you letter. Akane's left hand. On Akane's left hand, a ring glitters on her ring. Ah! Oh my heart. Ah. Ooh, there's three here. Hey, Mira, how are you feeling? Are you lonely? Come on, Eric, you visited last week. Eric smiles wryly and reaches out to Mira with his left hand. Mira does the same and their hands with matching silver rings align on either side of the plexiglass window. Oh, they actually... Huh. Interesting. I, I bought a new guest to see you today. Eric shifts to the side and the head pops into view. Yo. Hi, Amira. Long time no see. It's Sean, right? Yep. I'm happy you remembered. Behind Mira, the sun is shining through an iron-barred window, lighting up the visitor room. It's been a long time, Sean. It's good to see you. The smile that appears on her face is real. Mira no longer needs to plaster on a fake one. When I heard you turned yourself in, I was really surprised. Eric was the one who convinced me. He said I should pay for my sins so we could be together. So that's why you got married in jail. Eric ducks his head shyly. Wow. Are you sure you're okay with this? Mira asks. He looks at her in confusion. Don't you regret marrying me? I did carve your heart out in another history. Isn't that what you said, Sean? Yeah, you did. Eric looks Mira straight in the eye. I've already told you this a bunch of times. I forgive you, no matter what happens. Besides, you haven't killed me in this history yet, right? Yet. Yeah. Mira's lips twist wryly. But the Heart Rippers killed people already. So many. Sean, stop it! Eric turns angrily on Sean, and Mira's face falls into a frown, but Sean continues speaking. You turned yourself in, Mira, but that doesn't mean you paid for all the crimes you did. I doubt the family and friends that were left behind would forgive you, even if you were put on death row. There's no way you can clear your sins here. Mira grits her teeth. But there is a way to clear them. Well, not what you've already done, technically. You'll have to pay for those your whole life. That will never change. But maybe you can in another universe. Oh? Suddenly, Sean's fist crashes through the plexiglass window. Ah! Mira jumps backward wh with while Eric is frozen in shock. Wh what are you? Eric can't even finish speaking before Sean moves. Jumping through the broken window, he kicks the outside wall of the visitor room, causing it to crumble and reveal a giant hole. An alarm immediately starts blaring, and police officers rush into the room, but Sean darts forward and takes them all down in the blink of an eye. What? He holds out his hand to Mira. Let's go. G go where? I know where the transporter is being stored. You're, you're saying we should go change history? Eric finally stutters. Sean nods. To stop young Mira from committing murder. Mira, I'm pretty sure that's the only way you can clear your sins. Mira stares out through the hole in the wall at the horizon extending beyond. Oh. 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 I. Huh. I guess that actually is one way of doing it. Wow, that did not I did not expect that to turn out that way. No wonder they had three of them. Huh. I think we already went over this. Yeah, this was 17 years ago, young mother went jogging in the park. She reached a fork where she usually goes right, but on this day she decided to go left. Why? Because there was a snail on the path. No one knows why she avoided the snail. Was she afraid of them, or felt a sense of danger from it? Whatever the cause may be, the snail caused her to switch to the left path, and as a result, she was killed by a girl. Yeah. Huh. Hmm? Did I miss something? It must have been one of the escape rooms. I probably missed something back there. Okay. Huh. Well, first, let's talk about Carlos. That was just the sweetest ending for him, I think. 
That was just so goddamn sweet. But for some reason, Sigma, Diana, and Phi are not really talked about. Hmm. I think that's pretty much it. We did it. We completed it. <sighs> well, guys, we completed. We completed z the Zero Escape trilogy. I'm gonna double check the documents here to see if there was anything that I missed. Oh, not the flow, you dingbat. Let's see. Ward C, Q, and D being in the same space means the air ducts in the prep room and lounge don't lead to other, other wards. Inside is simply a small space for Gab where he often rests on a rug. Oh! Oh! Okay, there was actually more. The suspect who was taken into custody, a Japanese man, was not the culprit. He was falsely convicted and executed, and his wife committed suicide in her grief. The two left the young children behind. The convicted man called a taxi before his arrest, but the taxi ended up picking up another fare instead, a brilliant surgeon. However, the car became involved in an accident, killing the surgeon as well as the young boy who was waiting for an operation by the surgeon. If that snail hadn't been on the right path 17 years ago, what would have happened? Life is simply unfair, don't you think? Yes, I do. Oh wow, that is actually really cool! A nice little explanation here about how all of these work. Huh, that's cool. Monty Hall Problem. A probability based off of a TV game show hosted by Monty Hall that is strongly divisive among scholars. The problem is as follows. Three doors are before you. One hides a prize behind it while the other two hide goats. The door with the prize is random and only known by Monty. Monty asks, which one of the three doors will you open? You then pick a door, but it remains closed. One of the two remaining doors is opened, revealing a goat. It's possible both doors contain a goat and you pick the door with the prize. But then Monty asks, now there are only two closed doors. Which one do you choose? Will you change your mind or stay with your first choice? I'll show you answer. You'd think, there's no way to know which which is right, but the chances are 2 to 1. The probability for either door is the same. However, the question will be answered in the game. The gas mask's location is completely random, therefore using probability to choose the correct locker may still result in getting the wrong one simply because of bad luck. Huh. Oh, just going over like the doors here, or at least the rules. Active times for all teams max out at 90 minutes. Once the time expires, your bracelet injects you with memory loss and sleeping drugs. Map. Yeah, the, all the stuff that we already have. The phenomena which allows a person to send their consciousness to other universes and histories. It is an acronym for space-time human internal fluctuating transfer, or morphogenetic fields. Decine fata deum flecti spirere prisando. From the Aenid, it roughly translates to fate and the dooming gods are deaf to tears. Huh. Missing one? The dit acta est fabula. A familiar line from, from Virtue's Last Reward. It translates to applaud. The play is over. Technically, Radical Six did not kill six billion people. The spreading of the virus caused chaos and panic around the world, prompting the explosion of several nuclear reactors. It is those explosions which led to the six billion deaths. Ah, oh. uh, there's the other one. Morserta ora incerta. It translates to, death is certain, its hour is uncertain. Hmm. Also known as the daydream syndrome. The brain cannot handle the amount of information entering the brain and in effect shuts down. The cause of this syndrome is currently unknown. 
Incinerators are required to reach temperatures of at least 1560 degrees Fahrenheit or 850 degrees Celsius for two seconds to ensure proper material breakdown. Human cremation occurs at 1400 to 2100 degrees Fahrenheit or 760 to 1150 degrees Celsius. Okay, dark stuff. These are an antidote, please drink them. Antidote hint? Huh. Well then. A secret organization created by Akane Kurushiki. Their ultimate goal is to create a better future. Akane's brother, Aoi, is second in command and is assisting her from, in, from outside. Hmm. DCOM is not a government-run facility, but is privately owned by a company researching space development. The company is largely owned by Free the Soul, but that detail is kept hidden from all knowledge. Naturally. A cult organization that desires to save mankind by creating their ideal new world. The head of this group is a mysterious figure called Brother, aka Zero, aka Delta, aka- HOLY FUCK! Hydrofluoric acid is an aqueous solution of hydrogen fluoride. This acid is a contact poison that is highly corrosive. Amen. Two to the hundredth pa. Nope. Actually, can I even read that? Let's see. Hundred thousand, mil uh, million, billion, trillion, quartillion, billion, sextillion, million, million, octillion. I fuck it. Metapsychosis. An example. You're in a totally dark room with a die in front of you. If you roll a one, the light turns on, but any other number keeps the light off. You can roll it as many times as you wish, so what will the dice number be when you see it? One, of course, because you can't see any other result. Stabe Mater Dolorosa. From a Latin hymn, it roughly translates to The Sorrowful Mother Stood. The, popular, uh, the popularly held belief is that our language center resides in the left side of the brain. The re recent research has revealed that the side differs among individuals. Roughly 30 to 50% of those with their language center in the right hemisphere end up left-handed, while only a small percentage are right-handed. The side containing the language center is called the major hemisphere. Hmm. So there's a possibility that my language center is in my right side because I'm left-handed. Okay. Leucochloridium, a parasite that uses snails as initial hosts and then transfers to birds. The egg originates in the digestive tract of a snail and then migrates to the tentacles. The Leucochloridium causes the tentacles to take on the appearance of a worm or a caterpillar, which draws the attention of birds. Once eaten by a bird, the parasite will lay an egg that leaves the body with the feces, which then becomes food for snails, and the cycle continues. What if the snail mentioned in Zero Story had a Leucochloridium inside? Oh. Huh. Also known as the hair worm, it is thin and long. The larvae are hatched in aquatic environments and then consumed by water insects, which are then eaten by land-based bugs like crickets and praying mantises. Once the parasite reaches adulthood, it can control its host, leading it to water to drown it. The parasite then escapes the host and returns to the water where it reproduces. The larvae are eaten by water insects and the cycle repeats. Oh. An endless cycle! A single cell organism with a width of about 2 to 3 micrometers and length of about 4 to 7 micrometers. One of the most common parasites. Its definitive host is the cat. An infected rat loses its fear of cats, making it more susceptible to be preyed upon by its predator. Huh. Oh. Interesting. Video game structure can help explain. Protagonist P travels to- okay, we're- this is basically just the stuff about how uh, multiverse theory works. Yep. Quantum computers function by storing data as ones and zeros in a binary number format. Quantum computers store data as ones and zeros and a superposition of both. This allows them to run multiple computations simultaneously, but by performing them not only in our universe, but other universes as well. There's the family portrait. The tank contains the materials used for transportation. The selection of the elements within include oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, calcium, phosphorus, sulfur, potassium, sodium, chlorine, chlorine, iron, zinc, magnesium, fluorine, silicon, titanium, <sighs> rubidium, strontium, bromine, lead, copper, aluminum, tin, cerium, cadmium, boron, iodine, molybdenum, barium, manganese, selenium, nickel, mercury, arsenic, lithium, calcium, silver, germanium, antimony, chromium, cobalt, and vanadium. <sighs> 
Eight of them nuclei sent to the output pod where it is read. The opposite of them recreate inside. Yeah! Taking the multiverse. Uh, yeah. Huh. You know, I'm kind of left with that feeling again where, you know, I partially can't believe that I that it's over like this it, it's it's a different feeling than when you complete a game that's usually like a single standoff or something like that. It's when you complete a series that you've been with for a while, it just this is it. The end. <sighs> it's kind of like a melancholic feeling, honestly. But this was bound to happen. Huh. Well, this was a fun ride while it lasted, honestly. I enjoyed it, and I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did, too. God, this story was so goddamn convoluted. But, in the end, everything should be safe and good and happy now that's and I think that's good enough for me so thank you all so much for joining me on this let's play and just the zero escape you know trilogy in general thank you guys so much for joining me on this and I will see you guys in the next video. Hello there everybody, Sabato92 here, and if you like this video, be sure to let me know in the comments down below. And hey, if you guys like my content, then maybe you'd like to check out another channel who I think deserves equal attention. So click that nightmare emblem and check out that channel, or go to the links in the description down below. Once again, thank you, and I'll see you guys in the next video.